Welcome to part four, the last part of our Spring Clean Your Finances series. We spring clean our homes to get rid of the dust and mustiness of winter. I've so far cleaned our craft room and my office area and in fact our entire house. And we should spring clean our finances too. And that's just what we've been doing the last three weeks. It just makes sense to freshen things up and make sure everything is working as it should be. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. You found us at a great time, spring cleaning time, and you can find weeks one, two and three in the archive videos. After three weeks of working faithfully on getting your spending plan tidied up, you should have a very good idea of where you stand financially. You've tracked your spending and found the leaks. Hopefully there weren't too many and if there were, you were able to plug them. You've made the commitment to a weekly review with your spouse or partner, if that's applicable, of your spending plan. And you've become aware of the triggers, the little things that make you want to spend when you really shouldn't and don't really want to and now it's time to take all that information gather it all together and use it to review what you have learned to evaluate just how you did at sticking to your spending plan <laughs> That was that was a sentence and a half. So let me say it again. I'll say it a bit more slowly because I wrote it and I've said it and, you know, it's still a mouthful. So let me say it again slowly so you don't forget it. Now it's time to take all that information that you've gathered over the last three weeks and use it to review what you've learned to evaluate just how you did at sticking to your spending plan. And when you've done that, keep the information to use next month as a comparison as you review how you are going because you're going to keep reviewing, keep tracking, keep reviewing. It's the only way to stay on track. The good thing about doing this is you may well see the trends in your spending habits that will help you plan for the future. If you've been overspending, whoops, look at what you overspent on and why. Was it an emergency? If it was, work on building up your emergency fund. Was it just an impulse? If it was, try applying the $100 24-hour rule. Or is your spending plan just unrealistic? And some of us are really guilty of that. If that's the case, work on getting your spending plan so that it honestly reflects your income and then trim the flexible expenses to fit and adjust your categories to fit. If you find you've underspent, woo, congratulations. Now I want to know what are you going to do with that money? My advice, what I would do, boost your emergency fund, especially if it's not already fully funded. And fully funded means that you have at least six months, preferably 12, of all your living expenses. That's all your living expenses. Or perhaps you could put it aside in a savings account in case you've actually missed paying for something. And that can happen too, no matter how on the ball we are. We're all busy. Things slip through the gaps. But generally, if you're under budget at the end of the month, it indicates that you probably have missed something. So don't spend that money. You'll most likely need it next month to make up what you didn't pay for this month. Your spending plan should balance at the end of each month with um, incomings being equal to outgoings. If you don't have a working spending plan, it's time to get one. I really, really recommend starting one. Try it for three months, three months, and see if it 
doesn't make a difference to your finances, to your financial attitude, to the way you view your money, um, your savings and your spending. If nothing else comes of it, you will most definitely be more aware of where you stand financially and just what you need to do to reach your financial goals. They're going to be different for everyone. None of us have the same goals. None of us live exactly the same lifestyle. None of us have exactly the same income outgoings. Our spending plans are personal, customised to suit us. That's what you need to do. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I read every question. Oh, sorry, I read every comment and I do my best to answer every question. If the questions are in capitals, they stand out, it's easier for me to find them. Now, before I go, thank you so much for watching. And if you've watched all the series, thank you again. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, please click that subscribe button and then the little bell next to it and choose how often you want to be notified of new videos we put up. And don't forget to like, it's easy. Just click that thumbs up button and share by clicking the share button to help us spread the word, to help us spread the word that it not only is okay to live life debt free, cashed up and laughing, but it is absolutely possible even in today's crazy mixed up world. I'll be back very, very soon with another video to help you live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing the cheapskates way.